Start. Good evening, one and all present here. I, Mandi Kaneva, Student Manager, Balaji Institute of International Business, feels it in introducing before you Mr. Herschel Girard, Director of Finance, Immersion Climate Technologies, India Private Limited. So, has completed his schooling from MSS High School and has done his graduation in BCom from BMCC Commerce and Accountancy. Talking about his further education, Sir has done his chartered accountancy from ICAI New Delhi. So, he started his career in April 2004 as assistant manager, finance, Kiloska Pneumatic Company Limited. So, then further moved to SKF as the assistant manager, treasury, and was there for one year. So, then joined Emerson Climate Technologies as senior divisional manager, finance, and tax for over one year. And he has been working as director of finance in Emerson Climate Technologies from the past two years, 11 months. So, we would like you to enlighten us with your words of wisdom. So, the podium is all yours. Good evening, friends. Thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity for sharing my kind of experiences through my short journey with this industry. But I would uh, like to be as brief as possible. I do understand that it's been a long day for all of you. And uh, there are some advantages of being the last speaker for the day, and there are some disadvantages. The good part is I'm connecting up with all of you, and then I think I'll just try to be as crisp as possible, and then probably I. I'm, I'm, I'll keep that mind, keep that in my mind that I'm standing between end of the day versus where I think after this session you all will, you know, uh, have some right takeaways from my session. Very quickly, I would just like to talk a little bit about the organization for which I'm working right now. Uh, I work for Emerson, which is U.S.-based multinational. Uh, Emerson is celebrating its 125th anniversary in 2015. Uh, you can see our uh, chairman and CEO, David Farr, uh, was given a message for all of us when we say that we take tremendous pride in our 125-year legacy of being leader and innovator of important technology of our times. It has been challenging and about rewarding. I think a couple of my charts down the line will see that from where I'm coming about the term rewarding journey and it is just getting started. So this great legacy, I think Emerson being pioneered uh, in various technologies across economies, across uh, various countries. Talking more about Emerson's uh, achievements, uh, it got founded way back in the 1890s, headquartered in St. Louis, uh, Missouri in the US. It is truly a diversified global manufacturer and a technology provider. Uh, our, our strength as of today is about 115,000 plus people spread across 150 plus countries and we have we, what we manage is we manage like 220 manufacturing locations across all these locations. Fortune has uh, rated us as world's most admired, one of the most admired companies and Thomson Reuters uh, is, has listed as top 10 100 global innovators. So Emerson is known for its innovation which is very well acknowledged by Thomson Reuters. For 2014, uh, we have recorded a top line of $24.5 billion and that takes us to 125th, 121st rank uh, amongst top America's largest corporations for 2014. Moving on to the next chart, uh, as, I, uh, as our uh, group chairman was referring to that it's always been a rewarding journey. This is what we have delivered to the investors of Emerson. Emerson has delivered 58 consecutive years of increased dividends since inception. I mean, I think it's very handful of companies which could manage to get delivered such kind of dividends 
ongoing basis. A very quick uh, update about uh, immersion as I talked about, we do have uh, multi-business activities, a really truly diversified group. Uh, all this, this entire uh, business can be get dissected, can be divided into five big business platforms. Amazon process management is amongst the largest uh, in it. Uh, as the name suggests, uh, this division takes care of the process management industry. So all the challenges are getting addressed by this segment as far as process industry is concerned and oil and gas is you know, one of those uh, business segments to which process management serves to. The second name is industrial automation. Uh, I think the, all the developing economies are having focus on the manufacturing operations. And industrial automation supports all those manufacturing companies to operate faster, manage more efficiently, and cost effectively. The third segment is network power. They are more into uh, managing, or managing or developing critical infrastructure for data centers or mobile kind of an always on world. So they keep building some of the very critical infrastructure equipments for the industry. Climate technologies, that's what I belong to. Uh, we are into HVAC industry, that is heating, ventilating, air conditioning and refrigeration segment. And the last one is commercial residential solutions, which talks about you know, execution of any project. And it works not only for professionals or the contractors, it also works with households. So this division also manufactures in products like hammers. This is a quick footprint of you know, our climate operation here in India. Uh, this is 800 crore company for FY 2015. Uh, we have our headquarters uh, at Hengiwadi uh, in Pune. And we have our uh, unique manufacturing facility, state-of-art manufacturing facility, based at a place called Atit, which is more towards south of uh, south on the highway on this Pune Bengal Highway, which is about 135 kilometers from this place. Uh, it's a huge state-of-art facility where we built like 1.3 million compressors in a year, and those are getting served largely to commercial applications in air conditioning and refrigeration segments. So we're talking about some of our product information, where the products are getting getting used in a while. Uh, we do have uh, the Innovative Engineering Center, which uh, actually help us uh, developing all those new products, which is the requirement of the market. And I think during this changing world scenario, it is very important that we need to have a um, uh, fast acting R&D unit, R&D center, which is keep the game moving. Just to give you a perspective for FY15, 35% of our top line is just coming out of a new develop, new, newly developed product which got developed in a span of less than six months. So this is a very quick information about you know, our, our business products and uh, I will just take a privilege of taking you all of you through a very brief video just to demonstrate that what we <coughs> manufacture and where you can correlate Emerson's name as you see some of this information, some of these clips in this video. And it's just two minutes video, it's about four, four and a half minutes video and I hope you will all enjoy it. The largest producer of milk and the second largest in fruits and vegetables produce in the world, India, falls short with 440 billion worth of wastage in fruits, vegetables and grains every year due to lack of well-developed and quality cold chain infrastructure in the country. 
Emerson Climate Technologies, world's leading provider of heating, air conditioning, and refrigeration solutions for residential, industrial, and commercial applications, is committed to providing human comfort, safeguarding food, while protecting the environment. The Gold Chain and Distribution Center at Jharkhan, Pune, established by Emerson Climate Technologies, is a state-of-the-art facility, bringing solutions with global standards to be employed locally for the first time in the Indian coal chain industry. This coal chain and distribution center offers a full range of coal chain solutions from farm to firk, locally built, serviced and warehoused, ensuring a shorter lead time and fully customized products for Indian ambient conditions and requirements. The world-class assembly line is capable of building condensing units with reciprocating semi-hermetic and scrum compressors as well as water-cooled scrum condensing units unmatched in reliability, performance and energy efficiency. These condensing units cater to all cold chain applications including milk cooling, fruits and vegetables, meat and poultry cold storage, fishery and food services. Product range includes fractional and integral horsepower condensing units, both air-cooled and water-cooled, for high, medium and low temperature applications. Emerson Climate Technologies Cold Chain Center will also be offering semi-hermetic and scroll rack systems for cold chain industry in the coming years. With an integrated offering of electronics, flow controls and unit coolers, the cold chain and distribution center is fully prepared for the transition in the Indian market from product selling to bundle solution selling. As a world leader, Emerson Climate Technologies is enhancing its customer service capabilities with a cold chain and distribution center at Chakan. The semi-hermetic repair lab and the scroll teardown analysis lab are one of its kind in India. Built on global standards, the semi-hermetic repair center assists customers with in-depth equipment testing, complete overhaul of electrical and mechanical components, and functional testing. The scroll TDA center has the capability of providing root cause analysis for two 30 horsepower models. Emerson Climate Technologies Gold Chain and Distribution Center also has a fully capable training center with leading gold chain stalwarts on the faculty panel. This training center has in-house live demo on cold rooms and display cases with condensing units, controls and electronics for a hands-on training for customers. The all-encompassing training modules covering right from basics to design can be leveraged by contractors, engineers, wholesalers and all other cold chain industry professionals. With a classroom training provision at Chakram, Emerson also provides hands-on training at customer sites as well as through web, enhancing its reach to anywhere in the world. A complete range of products offered by Emerson Climate Technologies in the gold chain industry are showcased extensively at Chakan, helping customers now see their world-class options of technology. A unique offering to a highly valued customers, Emerson has also developed the Gold Pro software providing project design services related to chain for contractors and customers. Emerson Climate Technologies envisions the Indian gold chain market to grow manifold in the coming years, ensuring significant reduction of the percentage of food wastage in India. quick snapshot to you know just to make you aware that when, when we talk about innovation when we talk about business opportunities this is just one of the business activities which we cater from climate technologies operations here in India 
which is as of now less than 10% of our top line, but this is one of the key initiatives, which is need of an R, uh, need of sort of R market right now in India. We could, uh, we are, you know, we have seen those numbers, it's 440 billion rupees worth of food waste is that what we see each year. So this is one of the initiatives by Emerson to make sure that how we can conserve our food and how Emerson products can be uh, made use in cold chain applications to preserve some of this stuff. This is very quick, uh, just to correlate to Emerson products, that what, that's what we have. So next time when you go to any food joints, uh, whether that be Pizza Hut or KFC or Walmart, you will always find that uh, this is, you know, uh, all these places are getting cooled by Emerson Copeland compressor. So Copeland is a brand product that what we use uh, on a regular basis. Uh, it is very important that when we use milk, it is very important that it has to get to less than four degrees in less than three hours time and that can be made possible with Emerson Copeland compressor. We also serve to a frozen food storage facility, so whenever next time you see any of this uh, cold storage application, maybe frozen food or ice cream container, ice cream containers, uh, at the time of storage, transport or point of sale, all at all places, the places are cooled by Emerson. This is a quick update about our clientele right now in the domestic segment. We do have some global names like Carrier, LG, Hitachi. Uh, we also have some domestic giants in this industry, which is Blue Star, Voltas, some, some contract manufacturers for Coke and Pepsi, like Western and Frio Glass. So that's more on the domestic side, on the export side. We do have, again, carrier relationship out there. Uh, one of the largest manufacturers in air conditioning equipment, which is green out there in China. So we do have a sort of very balanced uh, customer base uh, across the entire world market. So uh, the brief, uh, the background why I talk so much about our organization, just to give you a feeler that when I'm going to talk about, you know, uh, about my experience or the way I'm looking at finance function, you get a perspective that we are, I represent what industry and then what this industry stands for the market. So talking about the functional areas, you know, uh, to me, uh, finance function is having the four strong pillars, which is nothing but. Uh, it's not fact of a life, but fact represents each of these functions. Let me start with the, the first name, which stands for finance. And I think uh, I will not be touching upon each and every area in finance function as such, but I'll be just touching upon some key areas which we personally feel that at this point in time are very important for a finance professional to understand and be aware about some of these changes. So the topmost in the finance domain is treasury management. So may that be a start for a startup unit or an existing uh, organization to expand. What is needed is capital. And what options do we have for capital investments? It could be you know, ECB for an MNC, or it could be loan from a uh, domestic bank. So there are various options which we can make use of, understanding those requirements, understanding the implication, the cost assessment of each of those options. We have to take right calls about capital investments. The next of the next uh, within the treasury management, I could see the most challenging part in current times would be trade working capital. So in industry terms, we always see that how what turns that what we have on our inventory, how do, how effectively we deal with our customers, what sort of receivable aging that what we have, which is normally called in the industry as DSOs. So day sales outstanding, day payables outstanding. How you manage your inventory effectively plays a very crucial role managing your cash flow for the company. Uh, you all will be surprised to hear that the way Amazon is managing its work capital, I mean, they have built like $14 billion just out of their business model and effective business model generating the cash by expanding the business operations. Risk management. Uh, risk management is uh, very important for a finance profession to understand risk management. Just a quick example here could be hedging programs. Uh, perhaps doing nothing can also be a sort of a strategy from a hedging standpoint. Just to give you an example, if at all you have exports and you also have exposures on your buying side, on your import side, if at all that balances each other, then simply by opening a dollar denominated account, which is normally called as EEFC, Earner Exchange Foreign Currency Account, that works as a natural hedge for you. So you can preserve dollars when you're going to collect it from the customers, which you can pay it out to your Supplier, so that's that can also be sort of an effective hedging program. 
But the underlying of your risk management policy is very well, very well informed because many a times, I mean, we have, if at all, we see dollar rupee pair for past five years. I think rupee has depreciated over close to 45 percent just in last five years. Uh, the current levels are 65.8 today. I mean, it hit the record break. 65.8 in the 52-week high, which we hit uh, in today's market. So the entity like us, where we do have 60 percent of our export. Exports, uh, which is dollar-denominated uh, business, uh, we it is very important that we manage it effectively. In these times as well, uh, uh, if you could recollect about three years back when rupees really started devaluing, many of the IT companies have taken a hit on account of higher hedges what they have placed with the market. So we have to just watch the market carefully. We have to strategize that what we want to do, and probably we have to keep learning from what our experiences were in the past. Uh, the next effective action area which uh, I personally feel is transaction banking. Uh, there are various new products. I think this is a changing uh, world from a technology standpoint which you can make use of to optimize your situations or strengthening your controls. I think there are various platforms which banking, banking industry is making available to a corporate. We have to just make effective utilization of it. I can just quote you a very uh, you know, classic development plan which uh, all these bankers have uh, implemented about uh, about a year back is a program called vendor financing so any of your vendor facing some issues managing their cash flows there can be a program which helps managing uh, which which can help vendor managing its cash flows in effective way this is all sort of you know without recourse program wherein there is no risk attached to an entity and we can we can still make use of uh, this product to help our vendors at an effective interest rate. So what is important uh, in this finance area is, you know, uh, just to summarize, we can see what is more important is we strategize what we want to do, uh, design, designate those policies, execute it well, and then post-execution, keep re reviewing that what, what was the end outcome of all our actions and do we need to modify any of our plans. <laughs> The next, uh, second uh, out of you know, fact, the second A, I mean the second alphabet A stands for accounts. I think it is first and, uh, you know, first and foremost function, I mean, uh, when, when we call anybody as, you know, sort of a finance professional, in, in old times people used to call a finance professional as Diwanji just to, you know, keep the bookkeeping and just look at those numbers, keep flashing those numbers. So our job is no longer being, you know, a number cruncher. We have to be effective management uh, representative, wherein it is very important that what are the priorities for your organization at any given point in time. Understand your priority well. Just be alert with the market conditions changing every now and then. It could be on account of, I think currency can be a classic example which we spoke a few minutes back. There could be commodities which are moving in a certain direction. You have to respond to it. You have to be more, more flexible to a market changing situation. So stay alert, respond to your management appropriately with the changes that you see to the market. Have clarity and simplicity whenever you report. Uh, it is very important that it is very simple, plain statement. And with a lot of clarity, go back to your management team, go back to your customers, go back to your suppliers, and you can work and achieve your objective. Compliance is, uh, nowadays I think compliance is getting its ground. Uh, I think there are a lot many changes which are actually taking place. Accounting standards and policies, we have to just you know, do the bookkeeping in a certain fashion. In AS, I think some of the accounting professional firms, perhaps uh, any of those big four, KPMG or PwC might be covering that at length, but then um, I think IFRS conversions in AS, which is getting implemented nowadays, is sort of a challenge, more from a compliance standpoint. There are regulatory aspects, maybe in the form of uh, ITC international trade compliances. It could be international financial control, so internal audit systems and everything. That is also responsibility of an accountant's uh, team. And I think uh, it is also important from a control standpoint that there is an independent agency which keep verifying and watching, record, uh, watching the financial statements of your organization. So there can be various audits. So at any given point in time in, any, in the industry, you will see that one or the other auditor being in your organization, being in your office, conducting some sort of an audit. So it could be a financial audit, it could be a tax audit, it could be a process audit. I mean, I mean, SOX is, you know, Servants Layoffs Act, 
talks about having processes in place. So processes talk, talks about you know what is how a function how a process can be delivered. Who is who is preparer? Who is the authorizer? And are, whether those controls are effective effectively implemented. So from an accounting standpoint, I think three focus areas is prioritize. What are your what are your key actions, key priorities at that point in time? Stay focused, and then it's very important that you respond in a timely fashion. The the third alphabet stands for C. So finance accounts, and the C comes with costing. Uh, it's the most fascinating area to me uh, from many angles. I think the cost price management. I think everybody would just like to grow, and it's very important that how you grow. Whether that growth is really coming effectively to you. People are still seeing that how much is the top line, but I was just reading through one of those annual reports where I think you know in that annual report it was not only the top line growth, but then how much is the market share that you have from a margin perspective. So you know, it was Bajaj Auto's audit annual report that I was reading uh, about a couple of years back, and I think they keep continuing that trend wherein they keep talking about not only share in the top line but share in the bottom line as well and costing is the area which really make you effective looking at your cost positions and then probably managing your pricing strategies so there are only two ways where you can manage it well either you get down your cost or you improve your margins to lead to stay stay ahead of the market this is just a isolated sort of a situation, but you also need to be mindful of demand supply situation where your organization, where your product get placed in the market, and many a times you have to take the right call to you know keep growing your organization. There's always there is also a uh, we, we talked about Emerson always being innovative. So there's always a scope for value engineering which you can do to make your products better, make your products more cost effective. And how you can you know, get to the market? What demand is? What what market is demanding at this, that point in time? So, couple of points on costing: always think customer and always look out for value-add propositions. The last T stands for the last alphabet T. So, finance, account, costing, and taxation. T stands for tax, which is nothing but tax optimization. I think tax is sort of more al always seen as sort of a compliance but there is always an element of study and effective implementation of the, some of those tax rules which we have to abide to we do not have a choice but we always have a choice to select the right mechanism it could be in the form of direct taxes it could be in the form in, in income tax or it could be in direct taxes like vat and excise duty i think gst is we all heard that a lot for past so many years but I think the current government seeming to be taking right steps and getting GST effective. If it does not come by 1st of April, I think it's most likely that mid of next fiscal year, effective from 1st of October 2016, GST will come to our way. So understand your business models. Understand how you would like to strategize your distribution uh, mechanism and make the maximum utilization of the, I mean, just optimize these tax structures for your business. Effective business models is there are a lot many repercussions which any business house can attract. For it. Just to give you an example, from a tax standpoint, there is an effective transfer pricing that income tax department has introduced somewhere in 2004. One of my friends from PwC will be covering that at length uh, during the day tomorrow. He'll be talking more about transfer pricing, but just to give you an example, it is very important for all these MNCs having technology in place. Do they go down a path of just a contract manufacturing, or do they want to set up a unit which is ultimately going to ship to their customers? So some of this stuff has to be handled very effectively uh, and build your business model in such a way that you comply with tax and it helps you from from top line from bottom line as well. There is no choice about compliances. We have to go by rules and regulations, payments and audits. So I think all this stuff is given. We have to keep that in mind and we have to you know, comply with each and every aspect of it. It is again sort of an ever-changing rules and regulations. I talked about GST. Uh, I think a few years back, Mr. Chidambaram has announced a, a scheme uh, where he talked about changing the existing Income Tax Act, which got announced in 1961, but then uh, they, he was supposed to introduce a direct tax code which has no longer in force. I mean, I think they have made a lot of changes to the existing act. And so these kind of things will just keep coming now. What has been, what is new on that side is income competition and disclosure standards. 
So just stay focused, stay alert. What is changing on regulatory uh, ground, and you, you do not have a choice from a business standpoint to comply with all of that. But just make sure that you effectively make use of those uh, changes for your business. Uh, I talked about the technical part of it, but I think I would just like to spend uh, you know good amount of time on some of the competences for every professional, whether a person belongs to any domain, may that be finance, may that be marketing, sales, it is far more important for the individual to be successful in this you know, challenging world, to have certain competences. Just to talk about it, I think planning and organizing, it is you know, sort of a first competency, and these are, you know, frankly speaking, all are equally important. I mean, so don't read that in you know, what is important, what is less important, it, it's not in that fashion. But it's just to highlight that these are important competencies uh, in, in, in at each of these levels. So planning and organizing, it is very important that what you want to do, when you want to do, and how you want to do. So unless the planning is the first stage, if at all you could plan it well, I think execution is going to be far more understandable. You can track it, you can, you can calibrate it. So it is very important that you plan and organize well. The next part is collaboration. I mean, I think uh, I read a, a very good quote by uh, the great industrialist Ratan Tata, if you want to walk fast, walk alone. If you want, if you want to walk far, then walk together. It's very important that you collaborate. It's you collaborate with people. It is uh, you, whatever function you represent to it. it. May that be sales, may that be marketing, may that be procurement, may that be supply chain, whichever area you want to pick up. Alone you can't change the world. So understand, work, uh, work collaboratively, collaboratively with your people. The next part is communicate. So when I say communication, communication is uh, not only a delivery part of it. The first step is, you know, think. Uh, the, the first step is listen, and then I think second step to my mind is think, and then probably just respond. When I'm going to talk about this communication, uh, this you know recollects me of uh, a very recent announcement of Mr. Sundar Pichai being appointed as CEO of Google. And um, I think in his first speech, he talked about a good story, uh, which I'm sure few of you have must have been heard before. It is a famous cockroach story. Uh, so very, I mean, I think uh, the, the takeaway from that story is really good. I think that story goes like this. I mean, there was a bunch of ladies who were sitting in a restaurant, and then suddenly a cockroach flew from somewhere and then uh, just sat on the uh, shoulder of one lady. And then usually, I mean, obviously, can you imagine that the moment that lady is going to saw that cockroach, she make a huge, she made a huge noise of it. There was a complete chaos around. And then I think out of fear, out of fear, that cockroach flew and then sat on the shoulder of another lady. Now it was her turn. She was, you know, again started making that drama again. So it was all fun going on around. There was one uh, waiter who was just passing there by. He had just seen all of that and then cockroach fortunately flew from that lady's shoulder and then sat on the shoulder of this waiter. The guy was pretty composed, was pretty quiet. He had just seen the situation. He had just seen and when he felt confident, he had just caught that cockroach and just threw out of that bottle. So what is the takeaway? I mean, it's just a you know sort of a normal story which happens day in and day out for all of us. But if a person thinks about it, I think what is, you know, sort of a cooler here is our inability to handle certain situations. So if your professor is, you know, yelling at you or if at all your some family member is just, you know, shouting at you, it's not that member who is, you know, that family member or that professor is causing a problem for you. It is your inability to deal with, you know, that situation. So understand that situation. Understand what is the problem statement and then respond. So, you know, the, the way they hear the story gets summarized is uh, what that lady done and what this waiter done. The difference is the lady reacted to that situation and the, the guy, the waiter, has responded to that situation. So effective communication is all about responding to a situation. So listen, think, and then respond and do not react to it. The next competency is uh, integrate. It's very important that we keep, you know, uh, keep seeing lot many parts moving for us day in and day out. 
it's very important that we understand about our, all our experiences, what we hear, what we read, what we experience, what our predecessors experienced so far, while working out any, any, anything. It could be your day-to-day -day life or it could be you know, a sort of a professional work experience. We need to, you need to understand, integrate with it, and then based on your learnings, make that effective while you know, dealing with that situation again. Adaptability. Adaptability is, I think, it's far more important. It's a, in an ever-changing world, nothing is static. So if you, if you want to see the situation, if you want certain things to happen in a certain way, it will happen. What is happening today may not happen tomorrow. So have the highest level of adaptability. At some point in time, you all will be joining the corporates. But keep, that, keep one thing in mind that the way you are joining at some few years down the line, there will be a new batch which is going to get replaced. So, you know, be flexible, be adaptable to the situation. High ethical standards. I think this is the point we, which we keep hearing. Um, uh, the Honorable uh, Prime Minister is making a lot of changes for us to, uh, you know, have these high ethical standards. Avoid corruptions. There is a lot of talk which we always keep hearing all, of, all, all, all around. I mean, they think uh, all the governments will keep, opposition will keep blaming opposition, uh, the ruling party and ruling party do vice versa for opposition. But what is important is, you know, when I look at myself, am I, am I having the high ethical standard for me? It's very important that we as a citizen, we as an employee, we as an individual, carry those high ethical standards every day and day out. I mean, it could be, it could be a traffic police who is going to catch hold of us. If at all we break the rule, I mean, the learning is we need not to break the rule. But then the faster leave aways is just creating a precedence for that individual to repeat it again and again. And some other people will face the same problem. So start it with yourself and then only things will change for everybody. The next competence is about leadership. Leadership is not always when a bunch of people are going to follow one individual. Leadership can be leadership of a situation. So whenever you want to deal with any kind of a problem, any kind of a situation, just try and take charge of that situation and just try and find out a creative solution to that situation. So leadership can be construed this way as well. And I think the, the literal meaning is leadership. I mean, whenever you are driving a bunch of people, always be part of it. It's always, I mean, it is always better that we did it instead of I did it. I mean, that, that goes a long way. Initiative and innovation. I think this is, uh, this is need of an hour. Uh, if at all we are keep doing certain things in a certain way, there is, uh, I mean, there can be an alternate way. So think different, have open mind to look, uh, see about, you know, different alternatives, opportunities which can be made available. And this is, you will always get account for initiative and innovation like that. And the last, which I have highlighted there is think customer. Now, I think the theory is that what we always keep hearing is there could be internal customers. So from an organization standpoint, when I'm going to deal with my supply chain head or my operations head, he's my internal customer. And for external customers could be those blue star, multas, and other people. But there's a third, a third dimension to it, which I personally feel is think customer, and that customer can be you, you itself. I mean, when whatever you do, just think that is this right for you. So always keep this mind, keep this competence, this focus, and it will definitely help you as an end customer. So you will get benefited, and all others will get benefited because of this. So that's brief about the competencies. Um, I have, uh, you know, I think uh, since the, this, what has been told to me is we are going to talk about the dynamism or the challenges that what we essentially see in the market. Emerson believes uh, uh, on a particular program and, and next two, three charts, last two, three charts that I have, I'll be talking about a specific program which Emerson is driving called perfect execution. So the objective behind perfect execution is, you know, perfect execution is an enterprise-wide initiative to have fast, reliable, responsive, efficient port to cash in cycles. So what your customer need and can you make, can you get, can you get into those needs in an effective manner? And can you get paid for your efforts? That's the core objective behind this program called Perfect Execution. And it can happen in multiple ways. I mean, there's an innovation based on best cost producer based cost producer strategy with a focus on achieving certain parameters like lead times, have higher sales growth. It could be state change for improvising your working capital in the form of ITOs or maybe which is 
return on total capital employed. The three key areas which Emerson believes uh, which will always help optimizing to achieve this perfect execution is people, process, and systems. Now, honestly speaking, when we have, you know, when we got launched this program, these three keys, these three areas were sort of bottlenecks for, you know, for, for which were coming in between perfect execution. So what Emerson did is, these three things, if at all we take a stop, take a halt, understand what is going wrong and what I need to work upon. It could be people problem, it could be a process problem, or it could be a system problem. Go fix the problem and things will work for you. Keep the objective in mind that you have to deliver better to the customer, what, demand, what customer is looking at. So at Immersion Climate Technologies in India, we got a problem of delivery management system. So there was always an issue when a customer places an order on us versus our delivery time. So what we have done is we have identified the areas, that which areas we need to work, what are our bottlenecks in terms of you know, what challenges, what our operations team has, what challenges are, what our supply chain team has, and can we work those proble problems and then can we improve our delivery management time? And if at all we do that, can we go back to the customer? That instead of you know, our lead time is say four weeks, if at all we get delivered the product in two weeks, what we can get as a value add from your side. So net net it has to be a sort of a value add proposition by working on some of these areas and getting the things done. And this is how we execute any program. This is my uh, last chart. This is perfect execution strategy, what we follow. So we understand what is need of a customer, what are the customer values for which is looking at you. We design, we design right solutions through processes, through selecting with the right people to meet those customer needs. We plan our activities well. I think I talked about one of those competencies called planning and organizing. So we plan that pretty well, that how we would like to execute, which are all parameters. We, we, we also de define a model that how we are going to track the execution piece of it. And then the last and form, first move, uh, foremost important is execute, that ex uh, how the execution is going to take place and whether it is really giving results to the end customer. So that's how we track this program of perfect execution. And trust us, it, is, it has really helped, uh, helped us. I mean, I think we had a lead time of uh, about four weeks, and now we have a lead time of about two and a half weeks, which is really working pretty well for us. And this is the ever-changing scenario. I mean, I think if at all this is one project, you can always go behind your next priority and keep working some of these challenges going forward. So that's brief, uh, you know, about our core functions, and then I think some of those programs or projects, uh, the way Emerson is driving and dealing with its challenges. Uh, so uh, that, that's, that, that's all that I have from a presentation standpoint. I'll be happy to take any questions if there are any. Thank you, sir, for enlightening us by sharing your knowledge in the field of finance and especially emphasizing on the need of understanding priority of organization. 
and to be an innovator so that one can always stay ahead of others in the market thank you sir may i now request dr suresh chandrapadi to present a memento to mr harshal girat I'd like to you know say thanks to CII who has invited me for delivering this small um, you know small talk with you all you guys and then thank you so much for this uh, to the entire management committee of Balaji. It's very good ambience and very good crowd. Thanks for patient hearing. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs>